Don't lose your head, it's Master of the Flying Guillotine, one of the most batshit insane martial arts films ever made. How does one even begin to describe a film like this? It's a masterpiece of trashy, lowbrow camp cinema with an amazing soundtrack and fight scenes that astound in just how retarded and goofy they are. Explaining the plot may be difficult considering the film doesn't have much of one, but I'll give it my best shot. The film's plot centers around a blind kung fu master who swears vengeance on a warrior called the One-Armed Boxer, responsible for the deaths of his students during a political uprising. His weapon of choice, the titular Flying Guillotine, which he uses to kill every single one-armed man he finds in his quest for revenge. By the way, I hope you're sitting down for this explanation of the weapon itself. The Flying Guillotine, as shown in the film that is, is a collapsible hat on a chain that the master must toss through the air and land perfectly on his intended victim's head. The way it kills is that once the hat lands on the person's head, a cylindrical veil comes down around the rims of the hat, and inside the bottom rings of the veil, several curved teeth-like blades extend and slice all the way through the victim's neck, allowing the master to retract the hat perfectly and cleanly decapitating his victims. That is how the flying guillotine works. I dare you to come up with a more ridiculous and impractical weapon. You somehow have to have the superhuman precision to be able to land this thing square on the surface of a person's head from any angle. Actual real life engineers and scientists have tried to recreate and use the thing as it was originally intended. It's so insane and devoid of logic and utility that it ends up being amazing. The thing that really sells this thing, though, is the sound design. Every time the flying guillotine is hurled through the air, it sounds like a gun going off. And I'm not exaggerating when I say the director never once shows a scene of the thing flying through the air without that bullet sound. It's that famous stock bullet sound effect you've heard in countless westerns, cartoons, and other things. I have no clue why the director was so intent on making the flying guillotine sound like a bullet, but I'll be damned if it doesn't add intensity and flavor to the fight scenes. What's even more outlandish is that the flying guillotine was supposedly a real weapon. I place huge emphasis on supposedly, because there doesn't exist any actual evidence that it was a real weapon used by real-life Chinese assassins. If it did exist, then there are no original flying guillotines around today. And what's more, there aren't even instructions on how the thing was supposed to be built. The weapon's entire history is composed of hearsay and myths. So in that sense, it makes sense why someone decided to make a movie about it. The Master himself is actually a pretty good villain. He has a fairly intimidating presence, not to mention everywhere he goes. When all he's doing is walking, you hear the same music playing. <laughs> There's a brief moment in the first Kill Bill movie where the bride is in the middle of the insane climactic sword battle, and she sees Lucy Liu's character, Oren, leaving the room. And what music does Tarantino go with? Just in case you weren't convinced Tarantino was a huge film nerd. A huge portion of the film's plot also deals with a tournament. A bunch of fighters from different lands come to participate, and I can't help but feel like a bunch of them have influenced fighting game characters. There's an Indian guy, who is just a Chinese guy made up to look Indian, who can do Mr. Fantastic style arm stretches similar to Dalsim from Street Fighter. There's a girl who for some reason reminds me of Chun-Li. I don't know, maybe it's the dress she wears in that one scene that has the blue in it. 
There's also a Thai kickboxing guy who walks everywhere barefoot, and I can't help but think of Sagat a little bit. It doesn't take long for the tournament to start, and once it does, it's just one fight scene after another. The fight scenes are okay in terms of choreography, but what they lack in flashiness they make up for an absurdity. You've got the Japanese fighter, who cheats like an asshole, stabbing his opponent with a hidden blade. You've got the guy who chokes his opponent to death with his hair. you got this strongman looking guy who takes multiple kicks to the balls without even wincing, and then has his eyes gouged out. And at the very end, the master shows up and tears the head off of a contestant with one arm he thinks to be the boxer. The funniest thing about this is that the guy running the tournament scolds the master for killing someone, even though most of the fighters in the tournament have been killing their opponents already. Hypocrisy much? The rest of the film's plot deals with the one-armed boxer trying to form a plan to defeat the master once and for all. How he does it, I will not spoil, but I promise it's just as wild as the rest of the film. The film was directed by a guy named Jimmy Wang Yu, who is also the actor who plays the one-armed boxer. Yu actually made the film as a sequel to a previous film called The One-Armed Boxer. Though you don't need to have seen that film to enjoy this one. Yu was previously an actor working for the famous kung fu movie studio Shaw Brothers, having starred in films like The Chinese Boxer and The One-Armed Swordsman. He was only in a couple films with Shaw Brothers before cutting all ties with them in an intense lawsuit that ended up banning him from making any more films in Hong Kong. Because of that, he moved to Taiwan and produced the rest of his films there. There's a lot more to discuss about Jimmy Wang Yu that I won't get into here. The guy has a long history of controversy and scandals. One thing, though, that can't be denied is that this film and Wang Yu himself had a huge impact on the kung fu genre going forward, especially in most of Southeast Asia. It's possible that without Master of the Flying Guillotine, we wouldn't have films like Ong Bak or The Raid since Wang Yu really spread the love of martial arts cinema through both Taiwan and many of its neighboring countries. As insane and campy and kind of terrible as this film is in a lot of ways, one thing you can't deny is that it's never boring. The pacing is lightning quick, and there's hardly five minutes of screen time that go by without some crazy shit happening. The entire final act of the film is chocked full of over-the-top and ridiculous set pieces that you simply have to watch, as I feel like I've said a bit too much about this film already. If you're a lover of trashy, cheesy cinema as well as kung fu flicks, then I can't recommend this film enough. It's a hidden gem that I see hardly anyone ever talk about, and a concept that has to be seen to be believed. The entire film is up on YouTube, but you can get it on DVD for a pretty reasonable price as well. With that, I want to wrap up this episode of B-Movie Theater with a bit of advice. If you're a single arm amputee and you ever find yourself vacationing in China, all I can say is, watch your head. Uh -huh.